Hey, how's it going? Um, it's Monday and today at Young Life Club we are going to talk about how scandalous Jesus is, how insane his love is and how the way that he loved people would have just totally, um, man, it was just scandalous. It would have potentially come across in all sorts of different ways and and people probably would have thought he was either crazy or just wrong or promiscuous even or flirtatious at times. I don't know. Um, but we're going to talk about how, how the love of Jesus is scandalous, how um, the love of Jesus can really set us free and give us a new identity and, and wash away all of the things that we think about ourselves and the the labels we've let other people put on us, um, and how the love of Jesus is life. It's just life. And that in relationship with Jesus, um, true life is found. So, uh, the way we're going to jump right into it, it's the story, um, of Jesus hanging out with a woman and, and it goes like this. So Jesus and his disciples, <coughs> um, are just kind of irritating the Pharisees and um, they've kind of irritated them enough to where they have to leave and we find this in John 4 it says they have to go from Judea back to Galilee because the Pharisees are getting really upset at them and so instead of going all the way around Samaria they decide to go straight through it and they've probably been walking for about six hours and they're getting tired it's about noon time, and so they decide to stop. Um, the Bible says, so they had to go to Samar through Samaria. So he came to a town in Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of ground Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well. It was about noon. Now, I love this. It just mentions Jesus is tired. Um, he's, a, he's a guy, a human, just like all of us, and he has human experiences so he's tired he's hungry he's thirsty he's like i'm gonna take a break um a samaritan woman comes up at this time to draw water his down it was just jesus and the samaritan woman by himself because his disciples went into town to get food and he asked this woman hey will you give me a drink now what we need to understand is that this would have been pretty crazy. And, and we're going to find out in the story, the Samaritan woman kind of says that. Because she, like, freaked right away. She's like, you're a Jew and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? And in parentheses, says, Jews do not associate with Samaritans. So this woman is, like, taken off guard. And she's like, you're a guy, you're a Jew, talking to me, a Samaritan woman. What the heck? Now, we don't understand this, maybe, but back back then if you were a religious person uh you didn't really talk to women if you were a religious guy you didn't want to be seen talking to women especially not alone it could just create this idea that something fishy was going on especially if you were a jewish guy you were not going to talk to a samaritan woman they were considered unclean like if you associated with a samaritan woman you would be could be considered unclean and let alone the jar. So she's carrying a jar. That jar is unclean. So if Jesus were to drink water from the jar, that he would become unclean. It's just this this mess. Then also, the fact that this woman, um, she's coming to get water at noon. Now, there's no other women getting water at this time because everybody knows you don't go at the, during the heat of the day to go get water. You go in the morning and then in the evening to get water when it's not so hot out. So it makes us wonder, like, why is this woman going at the heat of the day to get water? We're going to find out. Um, she's, like, long story short, she's just that kind of woman. She's a woman that nobody likes. Um, Jesus answered her, hey, if, but if, if you knew, if you knew the gift of God and who I am who's asking you for a drink, you would ask me and I could give you living water. And she responds, you don't even have anything to draw. You're just, what? Living water? Now, living water, it, it probably, she wasn't thinking like, 
like water. She's probably thinking like running or flowing water. That's another translation for this word in Greek. Um, and she's like, but you're, dude, what? You're crazy, man. Like, you're just sitting here. You don't have any, you don't have a bucket or a rope. Like, how are you going to give me living water? What are you talking about? So she says, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Plus, where are you going to get this living water from anyways? Because water in a well is not flowing. It's just like stagnant water. Um, are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us this well and drank from himself? Jesus answered, Everyone who drinks this water is going to get thirsty again. We all know that. Like you're, you're going you're to have to keep coming back here and come back here. It's going to be the same thing. This life you're living is going to just be the same. But whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will be in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Now the woman's like, "Sir, you got to give me this water." I love, I love how literal she gets here. She's like, sir, give me this water so that I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water. So he says to her, go, go get your husband. I'm like, go get your husband and come back. She just like flips it real quick. It gets super personal. I have no husband, she replied. Jesus says to her, you're right when you say you have no husband. The fact is, you have had five husbands, five. She's been married and divorced five times. And the man that you now have is not your husband. What you have said is quite true. This is when every, it's like the record stops. And everything gets super real. We learn now why this woman is going to this well during the heat of the day by herself with no one else there. It's because she's kind of like the town whore. No other women, no other respectful women would ever, ever be seen with this woman. She was something to be ashamed of. Something to be forgotten. Something to pretend didn't exist. So she has to come to this well by herself. Because she can't come to it with everyone else. We also like, like the way that when she tells Jesus, like, I have no husband. Um, it's hard to get the, get the context from here, but it could have been that she was like making sure Jesus knew she was available. Like it, like the, that statement could have been like, sort of like she's coming on to Jesus a little bit. Like, Hey, if you have like, if you have this living water and, um, you know where to get it like what's up you know and and so so like everything just gets super real and Jesus is with this woman Jesus knows this woman and now this woman knows Jesus knows her and she gets super uncomfortable so she she's like sir uh, I can see that you're a prophet so she starts trying to like whoa, whoa, whoa. I can see that you're a prophet uh, our ancestors worship on this mountain, but you Jews claim that the place of wor where we must worship, worship is in Jerusalem. So she starts trying to get like, like the theological. She starts trying to get like, just change the subject. She doesn't. She doesn't like the personal nature of this conversation. So she's like, starts saying like, hey, you know, here's you Jews and, and Samaritans. We don't get along, and this is why we don't get along. What do you think about that? And she tries to like. Like, start talking about something else. I mean, how often, I, I've done this, when someone gets, like, really personal or starts talking about something I'm a little bit uncomfortable with, I'll try to, like, dance around the subject because I don't want to talk to them about that. Like, my daughter is so good at this right now. When she does something that she shouldn't have done and gets caught and we, like, catch her in the act, she will do whatever she can to try to change the subject. Like, it, it, like she will try so hard to start getting us to talk about something different. And I think this woman in this story is tr sort of doing that. Jesus doesn't fall for it. He ends up kind of entertaining her a little bit. Um, and he ends up just telling her, like, hey, there's going to be a time when we're going to worship in spirit and truth. And it's not really going to matter where we are um, because we're going to be able to worship the Father just in, in spirit and in truth. The woman ends up just going like, I know that the Messiah called Christ is coming. And when he comes, he will explain everything to us. So she's like, okay, I don't know. I don't know who you are. 
but at some point we're gonna get all this figured out so I think she's trying to like shut this conversation down and she just wants to get out like she just wants to leave and then Jesus says something to her that just changes everything Jesus says I the one speaking to you am he now you can't, I mean I think at this moment it was like for this woman I imagine in this moment she felt that what Jesus said was true that everything rewinded really quickly in her head and she realized holy cow that's how he knew about me that's how he knew I had been married five times and and wasn't married right now I'm just shacking up with a guy this woman had just been having an encounter with the God of the universe and she just became aware of it I think that changed her entire life the other thing that is amazing is that Jesus seems to have set this up on purpose for this woman. He got to this well and then sent his disciples away. She, this woman probably wouldn't have come up to the well if there were a group of people there. Instead, when she came up to the well, there was just this one guy sitting by himself. And Jesus started the conversation with this woman. Jesus wanted her to know that he knew her story and that he loved her and that he was offering her real life in a loving relationship with him. Real, true, living water. A life with him. He's, he's offering the same thing to us. He's offering us that same life. He knows our stories and he's still inviting us in to this real and true life. And, and we see in this story, like the disciples get back and they walk up and they're like, whoa, whoa, Jesus is talking to that woman, what the heck? But they don't want to like question, like they, they like just are like surprised. And then the woman leaves her jar there and books it back to the Remember, she came, the whole, the whole point of her coming was to get that water, to get, get water to take back to her live-in boyfriend or the dude that she's shacking up with. And she ends up leaving that jar there because she got living water. She got the kind of water that is really life-giving. And she forgot about the other stuff. And so she books it back to town. And it says, many of the Samaritans from that town believed, started believing in Jesus because of the woman's story. She said, he told me everything I ever did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they urged him to stay with them. And he stayed for two days. And because of his words, many more became believers. And they said to the woman, we no longer believe just because of what you said. Now we have heard for ourselves and we know that this man really is a savior of, this, of the world. Guys, this is insane. This woman who had to go and get water by herself because of how shameful she was, because of like all the, because she was a town whore, and those are those are those are things she did. Like, like, it, she had made choices. She had made really bad life choices, and, and was living kind of in the consequences of that. Now, I don't think thank God now we don't treat people all the time that way but I mean seriously still you I mean how many people at your school right now or at your work or or in town or whatever like there are still those unfortunately most of them are women who we we still kind of label as the slut or the easy one or or whore um, and I think we still kind of treat them we stand back at a distance, especially those of us who um, can be religious or whatever. We we don't treat them right, or or I mean, 
let's not even get into like people who are same sex attracted or um, dealing with some some of those kind of issues. Man, those of us who who are religious and who some of those of us who claim to be following Jesus really treat um, people terribly and like they should be ashamed of themselves and and we distance ourselves from them and that's just I, I, I like this is kind of a tangent but I just want to say I'm sorry because that is not how Jesus treats people Jesus went to this woman like he started the conversation with this woman and he gave this woman real life. She didn't even ask for it. He put it on her. He invited her into that. She didn't come asking him for anything. He introduced the entire situation to her. Um, and he would, and he does now to anyone. That it, the invitation to a life with Jesus, a life, a true life in a loving relationship with Jesus is open to everybody. No matter the mistakes you've made, no matter the things you've done, no matter the reputation you have, no matter how you feel about Jesus even, he wants to be in a relationship with you. He loves you and he is pursuing you. And that changes things. This woman who went by herself ran back to town and told everybody, she had no shame anymore. No shame. She was free to go back into town and tell the whole town, I met this guy. He told me everything I ever did. And and the thing that's not in there that but we see is and I bet she would have said, and he loved and he was he met me there. He met me right in everything I'd ever done. And they could see that something different was about her. And they went out and met Jesus. And they believed. And this woman who was an outsider was now an insider. This woman who was someone that was shamed and no one wanted to, to like know or be around became someone that people wanted to be around because she had been with Jesus. And being with Jesus changes you. Being with Jesus completely frees you to be real and true and fully alive. We see it in this woman. And guys, I am, I'm not going to lie. It happens still today. We, Jesus is inviting us into a real relationship with him. He still has that living water. And I, I am, guys, I am someone who, man, shame is, has been just a thing in my life. Um, there's been some things that I've done that I'm ashamed about. There's been things people have done to me that I've been ashamed about. I've This idea of being a loser. I mean, there was a whole year in my life where people threw me in the bush and just seemed to want to pretend like I didn't exist. Um, I've been fired from jobs where I don't think I should have been fired from jobs. And I've just had this idea that something is wrong with me. And, and that if people really knew me, they wouldn't like me. And guys, Jesus, man, he jumps into that and sets us free. And then we get to become people who can jump into that with other people and set them free, free through Jesus. We get to jump into the lives of those people that maybe others don't want to have anything to do with and say, Jesus loves you just the way you are. Right now, the way you are, Jesus loves you. And that is 100% true. And when we can accept that, boom life starts real life starts and it sets us free to live and to love and to be who we were created to be a life with jesus is about love it's about loving him it's about loving others and it's about loving ourselves. guys i hope that that you relate i don't know at some point to this story I hope that you can, can grasp how wide and deep the love of Jesus is for you. It is infinite. No matter who you are, no matter what you've done, no matter what you are doing, no matter the mistakes you've made, 
You cannot reach the end of Jesus' love, and he will never stop pursuing you. And it's that love that leads to true living water, true life. All right. I hope you guys have a great week. Um, and, yeah, thanks for watching this if you did. Bye.